and gentlemen, this is John Rare, joined again by Shady Jane on Shady Jane 85. We are brought back to you on TikTok, not Twitter, available on YouTube tomorrow, but we've got special guests currently right now, Kevin Brandon and Blaine Evans. So this first this first half hour tonight is a dedication to uh, two wrestlers that just recently passed this week, unfortunately, Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk, and of course we will do want to bring up an honorable mention, one of our true friends, uh, William Johnson, better known as Sloppy J. So uh, I know, Kevin, you were a huge fan of Bray Wyatt. Uh, just give us some feedback on, you know, the man that you got to witness and watch and uh, what you liked about Bray. Kevin, are you even there? I'm here. Uh, yeah, I'm here, man. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, uh, Bray, let's see. I'll be honest, man. A few years ago, I had pretty much gotten out of watching WWE. And when they brought Bray in, when I started seeing the uh, vignettes with the Wyatt, Wyatt family, uh, it really sparked my interest back in WWE again. And uh, so they pretty much hooked me in with the vignettes and the promos. And then I think, like, what was it like, uh, that first SummerSlam, then he worked Kane. I think he worked Kane in the Inferno match. I think it was the first pay-per-view he was on. But anyway, uh, yeah, man, I just, I, I pretty much just uh, got hooked off the vignettes and the the persona, you know, Bray's persona and with the Wine family, uh, that that kind of that? character and uh, persona, you know, just hooked me in, and so I was an instant fan again. And um, he uh, he pretty much got me into watching WWE again, and then it seemed like he had a pretty good run, and then they started booking him poorly, and uh, it just pissed me off because he he had the most potential. You know, out of any of the new guys that I've seen, and um, uh, of course he had, you know, pretty much had the stamp of approval by the Undertaker. I think Undertaker always liked Bray and thought he should have got pushed a lot better, or should have got booked better, and should have got some better spots. But they just didn't. They just didn't utilize him right. So I don't know. If it was a disappointment, but um. Yeah, man, he was, he was my favorite, you know, he, he was he was the best, man. I mean, talking-wise, I mean, he reminded me a lot of Jake the Snake uh, that I grew up on. Uh, he, he had that same aura about him that Jake the Snake did back in the day. So, uh, I don't know, man. It's, that, it's a huge blow, it's a huge blow, man, because there's okay, just not any other guys like him, and I don't, there's... Never gonna be another guy like him, so it, it's it's real sad to me, man. But uh, I guess that's that's about all I can say about him, you know. Alrighty, uh, Blaine. Ooh, I called you Blaine, not Blame. Uh, Terry Funk, obviously, you know, when we look at him, he was my influence to get in the ring. Uh, you know, him and Mick Foley, obviously, over there in Japan, is what I got my start. Uh, what was your, you know? Thoughts and uh, everything on uh, Terry himself. Uh, the fact is, we lost the legend straight up. <laughs> like to me, like first thing I ever saw with anything with hardcore was started with Terry Funk. So it's like anything with him and Mick Foley, uh, the stuff he done in WCW. I was a huge mark for the Chainsaw Charlie gimmick. I don't know why, but I, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed the Chainsaw Charlie and. Uh, you know, and I think what's funny is that first when I seen Chainsaw Charlie, I was just like, oh, great, here's a older Terry Funk, you know, after the ECW and everything. But no, he, like, he reinvented himself, you know, when he was in his, what, 40s and stuff? And he completely changed who he was. Like, when you look back, he had two careers. He had a career that you could look at him and, you know, compare him to wrestlers like, Flair, Malenko, yes, I'm saying Malenko, people, listen, this man was a technical technician back in the day, but nobody sees that. They know the hardcore legend, Terry Funk. He can literally adjust his style to anybody he got in the ring with. Yes. That and, was always amazing to me. And like this, uh, 
this generation of you know WWE people will not know him. Like literally, you're going to have to. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of stuff on the WWE Network. And of course, a huge congratulations today to AEW for breaking the all-time paid attendance record, according to their you know stats. But let's get back to the dedication here, people. Uh, Absolutely. We're not talking indie right now. Yeah, we're not. Well, you know, AEW is it's a, it's a milestone, people. So let's keep it going. Uh, what about you, Kevin? When it comes to Terry. At one time, didn't did you not want to book Terry for Deep South? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. I had um, I can't remember when the first time was, but I was trying to book him. I was trying to book him for a Carnage Cup, but it seemed to me like what I was I was trying to do is get him in like as a special guest referee for for like the finals one year, and I can't remember. It was. I tried to for a couple of years, and I. It just. Uh, I, I could never. Could never get a good contact on him. It was hard to try to find somebody. I. I talked to uh, Rob Feinstein, which. Uh, you know, not many people like him that I know. But anyway, I was. The point is, I, I knew he knew how to contact him, and. And, and I thought I, I. mean, I almost had it, and then it something happened, and. I don't know. Rob didn't give me the number, and uh, so anyway, it fell through. But yeah, my, I was wanting to book him, you know, one year or well, several years, a couple of years. Um, I want to say, let me see. I want to say the first time I tried or I was trying to it was Carnage Cup ten because yeah, um, I know I know at ten I did, but I can't remember if it, if it was before that if I tried. I remember at 10 I did because that's the one I really wanted to go all out on because uh, that was the 10 years when we started doing the documentary and uh, I was trying my damnedest to get him and I knew he, I knew he wouldn't work. I knew he wouldn't work like wrestling, but I, I knew, you know, maybe could get him to be a special guest referee. And so if I could have got a number and made it happen, then he would have ended up being the referee for that last match so but it didn't happen and it's a shame but I you know I would I'd give, give anything now if I wouldn't been able to get him you know but I, it just didn't it wasn't in the cards man I give you a 9 out of 10 on that explanation the only reason I'm docking you a point is you didn't name the name of the documentary which is 10 years of carnage I'm pretty sure it's still on all the streaming networks that it originally was on unless you got us kicked off some more streaming networks Kevin uh, Blaine, what was your thoughts on uh, Bray Wyatt? <laughs> Probably the very first person that's got me back, like, wanting to watch anything to do with wrestling. Probably 10 years. Yeah. Like, his psychology, his mic was like, just like he said, Jake Roberts. He didn't have to scream to get his point across. Like, and everything he said, it just sucked you in. And like that was always really amazing to me storytelling at its finest I believe yes like the chemistry that he has with a camera is you know just unbelievable he the you know certain only certain people have ever had this and I will say it I was not an LA Knight fan and I don't you know I'm not trying to change the subject I am an LA Knight fan now I don't know why he is honestly and everybody what's funny is everybody is comparing him to you know the attitude era and everything he reminds me of the Attitude Era. We all want the Attitude Era back, right? So why not like him? Yeah. I didn't like him at first. I'll admit it. But, yeah, he's a fan. I didn't. Of I, didn't. I did not like him. I just, I don't know. There was something about him. But, yes, he has grown on me. And, yeah, he was Bray Wyatt's last uh, match, which was what? Royal Rumble? Yes. Yeah, that pitch black match. Yeah, yeah, pitch black. Mountain Dew. Drink it. They're not paying me? Not yet. So yeah, Bray was an amazing uh, talent, and I know uh, I, Blaine, you may not have known him by chance, but you know William Johnson went by uh, Sloppy J. He was one of my backyard wrestlers, and he got yeah, trained up. Okay, yeah, he got you know he got trained up. He actually participated in Carnage Cup Seven in the Cluster Something Battle Royal. Can't cuss here, remember? And you know he uh, got in there with. Uh, Big James Mayhem, 
So, you know, so that was a special show for him because, you know, he always wanted to do a Carnage Cup, and luckily for him, he knew John Rare, and I was able to get him on there. You know, thank you again, Kevin, for, you know, putting him on that show because that meant the world to that guy. Yeah, man, I was glad I was able to, man. I just hate he's gone, but... And, you know, talking about, you know, talking about... Talking about Carnage Cup meaning the world, you know, here recently, and we're going to get on to Carnage Cup next, I promise, that'll be on the next show, but you know, Carnage Cups mean so much to so many people, and just like Sloppy, you know, Christian Cross, some of these guys that don't get, you know, that uh, notoriety that maybe they don't deserve, maybe they do deserve, who knows, but you know, something like Carnage Cup is, in, you know, a lot of people's eyes, don't, don't, get sad or sappy, Kevin, but, uh, you know, they don't look at it as Tournament of Death. They don't look at it as a Tournament of Survival or any of the big ones. So whenever a Carnage Cup comes around, they're like, hey, I can probably get on this show. And, you know, sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. Sometimes we've had really bad workers on Carnage Cup, and then sometimes we've had the true legends on there. You have always been really good at giving people that opportunity. And, uh, you know, it meant the world to him, and you know how many people you get voting on this show. And, you know, sometimes the simplest show, like a Carnage Cup or, you know, whatever, it means the world to these guys. So, it's a dream come true. Blaine, what was, like, right now in your career, what is your dream to finish your career? What do you want? Uh... I want to leave a decent enough legacy for everything I've done not to end up being all for nothing. Yeah. Um, definitely a Carnage Cup win, no doubt, just like anybody else. Otherwise, we'll be going through this shit for no reason. But I just want to leave a legacy showing that at least, you know, the 23 years I was in, it wasn't for no reason. Now, a lot of people may not know it, but, you know, obviously me and Blaine have outside ties with the same people, but we will discuss that on the Carnage Cup. I'm sorry, I've kind of got off subject. This is about Bray Wyatt, the legendary Terry Funk, and Mr. Sloppy J. So, you know, Terry Funk obviously was what got me into deathmatch wrestling. I say deathmatch wrestling because as a kid, I was growing up watching Randy Savage, and I'm talking about the Randy Savage that wore the headband around his head. That's the 80s Randy Savage. A lot of, you know, a lot of people don't know that Randy Savage. <laughs> I'm old, people. Like, Kevin, I'm not sure how old you are now, but if you were older than me a few years ago, I'm older than you now. So, and that's a proven fact that I've gained age over these last few years. Uh, that's a messed up logic. It is, but it's true. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Bray Wyatt, just like you said, Blaine, was something that we have not seen in, you know, 10 to 20 years. Because I was going to say we haven't seen... No one liked The Undertaker, but we have. And I want, I want you to take one guess. Help both of you take one guess of who I'm talking about. Who has been The Undertaker's replica, basically? I mean, besides Gang, really. You got it right there. Nobody can forget I mean, about Gang. Yeah, nobody can forget about Kane. His legacy, like he is in the Hall of Fame now, right? Right? I don't know. You know what? I think he actually was inducted in 2020, and that's the year that they didn't do it because of COVID. Yes, he said. Yes. So Undertaker inducted Kane via, you know, the satellite phone thing. So, yes, Kane is in the Hall of Fame. But, okay. He's the only other person in the middle between Undertaker and Bray Wyatt that brought out that special type of character like that. And yes, Bray was truly amazing. Didn't like the Husky if Harris. There's anybody, if there's anybody that could carry on anything with that, he's the only one that could have. Yeah. And I'm That's sorry. That's kind of spot we could easily feel. And I'm like, you know, I did. I liked Karrion Cross at first in NXT. But I think they killed his allure just by having him be so dominant, but only to lose to Jeff Hardy on Monday Night Raw. That killed his career. Not him, 
And, you know, definitely not the fans. A lot of people say, if you know, the fans don't get behind you, you're dead. That's not true. You've got to get them either to hate you or either to love you. If they're not paying attention to you, you're not doing your damn job. Yeah, that's when you're sinking in the water there. Yeah. And, I mean, I know... Everybody, I know people don't like me. It's whatever. Sometimes it's when, I, when I'm the good guy out there, yeah, I don't do it right because I'm just naturally a bad guy. You know, sometimes you get into these funks where you're only one character and you can't deal with it otherwise. Because <laughs> both of you gentlemen will know this. If Kevin was like, Hey, Spider, I want you to go out there tonight, hand out some ice cream... And one extra ice cream that I'm not going to give Blaine Evans because I'm not going to give him the ice cream that I promised him because I promised him some ice cream at Carnage Cup 12 and I didn't give it to him. But Kevin's not going to give... Then my bad, I got off subject. Kevin, you're not going to ask Spider, rest in peace, to go out there and do, you know, funny stuff because you know he ain't going to do it. Yeah. Now, now, a testament to my brother that I love to death... He will. He he would do it in the ring to mess with you. He would do it in the ring to get a rise out of you. But you wasn't going to tell him to go out there and do it. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> he would just look at you and giggle and say, "No." <laughs> Hold on one minute. We're dealing with outside interference here. Okay. We're. To do what we're doing tonight, we are actually running off four phones, people, streaming live on TikTok, recording for YouTube, obviously on Facebook Messenger, thanks, uh, is it Zutton, Zertenberg? What is his name? That's Facebook. No, this is TikTok. No, Facebook is uh, the phone call. Free, free phone via Facebook. Oh, okay. See? You, got, you, you always teach the wife from day one. So let's hurry me on to the next subject before she hits me or does anything physical to me. Uh, you know, I think you remember this, Kevin. You may not, but me and Spider was actually going to do a barbed wire massacre match, and we wanted to mimic it off of Sabu's match with Terry Funk. You remember that? Uh, yeah, I can't remember what what show was it. You know, I believe it was going. Originally, it was supposed to have been that Cage of Carnage show, but then you uh, didn't want me back because you started listening to the fans and you basically threw me away. Like I went around the baloney. I don't remember that, man. Yeah, obviously you don't. But uh, no, I'm serious. I don't remember. It. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It, ser it seriously happened. Uh, yeah, it was going to be me. And remember, it was going to be me and Spider, and we talked about the whole clipping of the uh, the barbed wire off the ropes like Terry did and he was going to get all well I was going to get all wrapped up in it but then uh, yeah I, rem I remember talking about the match but I can't remember what show yeah I think it ended up becoming Cage of Carnage and that's why you know that's kind of why it didn't happen I think was you know originally I was off the show and you know moving forward you just went uh, I think you got the cage and then then you booked me again after that, after the American Championship, Randy Epperson's show. Hey, Randy Epperson, I know you don't like him, Kevin, and that is fine. But September 8th in Cropwell, Alabama, live at Celebrations Home, Venom Championship Wrestling returns. And I'm going to be taking on the Lawless One, James Barrett, with another huge card. I am good with plugging. So, out of this, uh, Blaine... Like, I know it'd be a weird situation, but if you had a chance to choose between a match with a death match with Terry Funk or a cinematic match with uh, Bray Wyatt, which one would you choose? Oh, damn. Because, <laughs> come on, even I would have cinematic, I would have wanted a cinematic match with uh, Bray Wyatt. And I told Kevin I was never going to do one of them things either. Right. That sounds like you. Oh, no, I still have to go with the death match of Terry Funk, to be honest with you, though. Yeah. Now, if we want some uh, uh, Q&A real quick for this section, uh, pull up. can you pull up the uh, questions? You have to read that. I'm blind as hell. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Do we have any uh, questions? Or I met Terry Funk back in 97. Who's that? Uh, Sp a guy named Spider. Spider, okay. So everyone that's 
it's not driving around like a bat out of hell around the phone. Uh, no kidding. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to be outside. If I go in, I got kids running around. Oh, that so that's I fine. I, no, I'm, that's fine. That was definitely an eight or I, I'd say an eight cylinder. Yeah, we heard it loud. Like, like, like I heard that. I engine. smelled the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, a really good speaker. Stop sign, so. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, how long you been wrestling? He wants to know. Blaine Evans, how, how you said twenty three years for you? Yeah, this should be twenty three. Kevin, how long have you been promoting? I'd be, uh, let's see, uh, November the, let's see, November the 9th, 2002, so that, that's, uh, what, uh, 20, be 21 years in November, yeah. Yeah, you've been around a little bit less than our marriage, so that's not bad, Kevin. Yeah. Now, of course, I, I started Backyard Wrestling March 4th of 2000, and then I did my first professional indie match in uh, 2007. Okay, that's a good question for you, Kevin, on this uh, on, on, on Q&A. What is your favorite match you've ever promoted? Oh, favorite match. Oh. I know that one's kind of a that one's a doozy there for twenty some years to think about it. Man, I don't know. Uh, What's the top one that comes to mind? I mean, it, I, man, I don't know. I can't answer that, man. I like <laughs> that's that's got me on the spot. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, it take it take me a minute to think about it. All right, so uh, he's got too many. So on that. Um, to look up his promotion, all you have to do is look up IWA Deep South. He's uh, got a YouTube. It's also available on Smartmark Video to buy the DVDs. Oh, here we go. Title Match Network to stream. And you also still have some on the streaming app Tubi. Next question. Okay, so we got a question about Box Cutter Match. 10 out of 10, his favorite. Uh, you want to go into detail about this box cutter match? So I have used the box cutter in multiple matches. Uh, first match was Carnage Cup 7 against Spider Boudreaux, rest in peace. Uh, the second time, technically, was Carnage Cup 8 when Spider got me back in the chest. We did not do a spot like that at 9 or 10 or 11. And uh, just recently, you know, Kevin Brennan uh, brought up the idea of a sister match for the Saul Death match, which was Spiral, which was actually me and Blaine Evans here. Um, we're not allowed to talk about that match live on public or, you know, anything, but... Contracts, contracts. I, yeah, we can't talk about the Spiral match, but I can say that I did stab Blaine Evans with a box cutter that day. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so, okay, Blaine, that's a good... How did it feel? Uh, the coal miner's glove match. So, uh, how did it feel? Yeah, how did it feel? The initial hit was not bad at all, but once it you held it there for a second, I realized it was in there, that's when it was like, oh, snap. Like, yeah. It's one of those things you always hear somebody says, you never... It didn't really hurt until you look at it. Yes. Like, once I looked at it, I seen it, I was like, ah. <laughs> Do you know who was in that match? So, um, while we're on, uh, we got five more minutes for the tribute show, and then uh, we will shoot back over to uh, Carnage Cup. Technically, we got uh, eight minutes. My bad. Uh, so, Bray Wyatt, what would you, uh, both of you, what would you have considered his greatest match ever? Match. I don't know. Still, one of my favorite matches is that six man tag with the Wyatt family and uh, the Shield. Yes. I still think it holds up still to this day. Yeah, that, you know, that was a rivalry, especially with the three man team that never, as far as I can remember, never existed really in WWE. Because, you know, WWE never really had the three. Three-man teams. You know, there was the Freebirds, 
But what? Well, that was WCW, right? Yeah, WCW, yeah. Yeah, Freebirds were WCW. So, yeah, WWE really never did have that power three. They did the demolition at one did They had demolition at one time that did three? In the yeah, 90s? Yeah, and then the yeah. Road Warriors did the three uh, in the 2000s. Because you remember at one time they brought, what, Heidenreich in as a third and Darren Drawsdolf. Rest in peace, uh, Draws. He also died, uh, what, within two months? Yeah, that was the whole L.O.D. run, wasn't it? Yes. You know, and I was a Draws fan. For whatever reason, I don't know, you know, I was obviously a lot younger back then, but I don't know what it was that drew me to him. I guess it was the tattoos and peers, and, you know, he just stuck out a lot different. And then you got to watch his, like, introduction to uh, Vince McMahon, who, uh, you know, he was like, he's gonna puke. Have you ever seen that video? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, you know, that, yeah. when you watch he stuff like that, you're just like, I'm going to watch this guy and see what the hell he does. Yeah. He was definitely interesting. Wasn't he like a football player before all this? Yes, he was also a football player. I cannot remember where he went to football or where he played at, but yes, he was football. And unfortunately, you know, the one that hurt him, I was also a huge fan of, and I actually wish he was still... You know, he was one that... Doink I'll, the Clown. I'll, doink the... <laughs> doink, yeah, Doink. The original Doink the Clown did die. Wasn't that last year? Or was that... Had that been a few uh, years? I think it's been recently, actually. Wasn't it? That's... I was thinking it was. I, I, Matt Bourne was doing. the original Doink the Clown. Yeah. I mean, and obviously, you, you, you got a lot of Doinks running around doing the gimmick and everything. But, yeah, he, the original died recently. And, you know... To tell you the truth, you got to applaud that, or applaud him for getting a clown gimmick over because of all things you would think would be over is, you know, a clown. And I know back in the 80s and 90s, there was some god-awful gimmicks. And believe it or not, I always thought the worst gimmicks at first were in WWF because I was a WWF guy. I've been recently going back watching WCW's pay-per-views and live and everything that they got on the network. And they had some god awful gimmicks. <laughs> like I'm talking bad, bad gimmicks. But and, he would play the character when that bill rang, though he could go. Like that was the thing about him; he would literally just whoop these guys' ass. Well, you know, I've heard the same thing about uh, Brooklyn Brawler as well. You know, everybody, you know, he's the greatest jobber of all time, whatever. But they said that that yeah. man would lay you out as well. Yeah. What you guys think? Those yeah. those guys back in the day, like Undertaker said, carried guns and fist fight all <laughs> fist fight every night. So, you know, they were they were a different breed back then. Brooklyn Brawler worked there, kept his main job there forever, though. Yes, and it, he also did backstage stuff from you know from what I was told. I can't put no guarantee yeah. on that, but then they just I mean he just recently got let go like what the last year or two. Yeah, it's been the past year or two. And how long he been with WWE? Like, what, 40 years? Or how many years? Long time, wasn't it? It's a long time. 40 years. I'm pretty sure it's 40 years, I think. Is he talking about the professional or me? You know what's funny, guys? Uh, uh, one of the people just said something about, you know, Thumbtack Jack was his favorite character that got him into wrestling. And, you know, I met Thumbtack Jack at Carnage Cup 5, which I was supposed to have wrestled, but. Yet again, Kevin pushed me to the side, and I didn't get to wrestle, so I didn't get to debut a lot earlier than I should have. And I bet I you you eat cake for that, Kevin. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know you, man. You didn't, didn't know, know me. You didn't want to give me a chance. No. Joe, no. But he did have any money. You Joe, get, Joe, you, Joe said he's got. He, he, I rented the ring. Yeah, I know. And I he, know. And then you know the deal. And then then he was like the day of. He's like, okay, well, can you put these guys on? And I'm like, man, I already got a full card book. Like, we got, like, 11 matches. And so, yeah, I mean, it wasn't you. It was, it was, we already had, like, 11 matches already booked. Yeah, I know. Shout out to Sexy Eddie, of course. Uh, Drake. Drake was there that night. Awesome. Uh, also, rest in peace, Danny Havoc. I still remember him that night looking for the, day, uh, for the weed brownies. Like uh, Nick Gage that night, I th I'm pretty sure he was after the brownies too. Like it, 
I have a lot of good stories from that night, but you know, I wanted to be in that ring that night. Thank you for the gummy gifts, guys. Share, like, follow. That, that was a good show. Oh, yeah. So we've got two minutes before next show. Uh, anything y'all want to add to the final for Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk? Rest in peace. I mean, won't be the same without them, that's for sure. The, uh, one of my favorites was that the 1995, I think that was like the first King of the Death match ever. It was the IWA Japan, uh, Kawasaki Stadium. I don't know if y'all saw it. And, and, you know, oh, I've seen it. Event was, the finals was uh, Mick, uh, Mick Foley and uh, Terry Funk. Uh, the no rope bob wire exploding <laughs> ring. Yeah, that one, that one Custom. is always stuck in my mind. That's that's one of my favorite Terry Funk matches. Uh, him and was well, Cactus Jack. Uh, y'all both seen that? Oh yes, and like yeah. I like I mentioned, that's one of the matches on top of Terry and Onita and uh, Terry and Brody. Like some of those that happened. Yeah, I think the Brody one was what uh, Mexico or. Uh, Puerto Rico, I think. Uh, no, it's uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, okay. Yeah, it was in Puerto Rico, yeah. Because you remember, like, that one that, that went out to the audience and that guy had that damn knife. You thought some shit was about to happen for real. <laughs> that that was Puerto Rico, man. They said Puerto Rico was... That was the wildest territory, man, because it wasn't just... I mean, they were doing, like, the craziest death matches, but, but the fans... I mean, the fans would stab you, or they'd throw bricks at you, or they said jars of pee, and, uh, man, they said it was just, it, it was it was wild. Puerto Rico. What happened to Brody there? I mean, yeah. But yeah, precisely. Like, bro, you know, he was killed there, and, uh, yeah, definitely wild. You know, and it's a good thing that security has gotten a lot better, because I've actually only seen something like that one time in my life, uh, the Ultimate Dragon, I, I can't remember the town, Haleyville maybe, but he did something dirty to Action Mike Jackson, and you know here in these country redneck towns, that's not allowed. Keep your hand off of Mike Jackson. This fan <laughs> went to his car and got an axe and brought it back in. <laughs> I'm a Okay. Okay, so we are now officially entering the second show, which Carnage Cup 13. Uh, Kevin, give me the date and set. tell the everybody the date for this because I get it wrong every time. Every time. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Carnage Cup 13, um, October 21st, Saturday, October 21st, Sunday, October 